Hello and thanks for joining me. This is part of a tutorial created for students studying in the Ocean and Naval Architectural Engineering Discipline at Memorial University of Newfoundland's Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. Today's tutorial is intended to provide an example of how to define watertight transverse bulkheads in MacSurf for a displacement hull. The objective of today's lecture is to increase your understanding of how to use the popular MacSurf CAD suite in this case the modeler and stability modules to further develop a hull form. By the end of today's lecture you should be able to identify essential MacSurf commands used for defining transverse watertight bulkheads and introduce bulkheads into a MacSurf or other NURB surface imported design. So I've begun by having a quick read through of some of the relevant standards to familiarize myself with the rough placement of bulkheads. If you're looking to do this in your own vessel, you'll similarly want to consider the prescriptive guidance given by the Classification Society or other international statutes or regulations your vessel shall align with. However, in this case, we're going to go through the mechanics of how we add bulkheads using the software. If you're interested in the underlying theory of watertight bulkhead placement and the rules and guidelines informing those design decisions, I have another video on the channel that discusses the undergirding theory in detail. For now, let's focus on how we actually build a bulkhead arrangement knowing that the software allows us to update in real time based on superseding information such as that which we gather from a floodable lengths analysis or based on developments provided by our rules or parametric information, etc. I've also taken a plan view of my vessel and sketched out a quick bulkhead arrangement. From my experience in reading, I know that I'm going to need several bulkheads to prevent the transmission of in-flooding water throughout the ship. As a general rule, it should naturally occur to you that where your ship has a fuller profile or rapid transitions in curvature or form, it's going to require more frequently placed bulkheads. And where it has finer or more parallel structure, the bulkheads can be placed more regularly. Additionally, requirements vary based on the material being carried, such as grain, fluids, people, and the like, and other considerations, such as where your main machinery is located longitudinally along your vessel. However, in this example, we're going to eschew the specific details in favor of demonstrating the software command sequence. I'll begin by placing my bulkheads. Click the bulkhead definition window. This brings up the input window. Now select File, New Transverse Bulkhead Points. Enter a location for your first bulkhead. You'll be designing for class rules in your projects, and depending on the class the exact bulkhead numbers and spacing vary, but I'm going to start with six bulkheads because that's probably going to put me somewhere in the correct ballpark for most class societies for a vessel with length greater than 120 meters. Now I know from experience we'll need a forward crash bulkhead in the vicinity of oh, about 3% of the ship's length from the forward perpendicular. So let's see, uh, my demo ship here is 130 meters, so 3% is 3.9 meters. So let's put our first bulkhead at 126.5 meters. Enter the location into the appropriate cell and press enter. Now we can go to the edit menu and select add bulkhead or simply press control A to add another row of cells to our input window. Next, I'll add my aft peak bulkhead at approximately 5 meters. So that's two down. I need four more bulkheads for now. Looking at my ship, I see that its breadth increases significantly forward of midships, and she's about as lean around the waist as a cow around the middle. So it should be apparent by inspection that our forward section will have a greater effect on our stability in a damage event then does the more parallel aft body. Subsequently, for now, I will place one bulkhead approximately through my aft section at 45 meters, and the remaining three equally spaced between my remaining length. Uh, so let's see, 126 minus 45 is 81, uh, divided by three is 27. So let's place them at 72 meters, 99 meters, and 126 meters respectively. If you're doing this yourself, don't get too hung up on your preliminary placements. Firstly, it's all educated guesswork until we run a floodable lengths analysis. Second, the number and placement of bulkheads will be influenced by the regulatory requirements of the Classification Society or the international statute governing your design. Finally, we're looking at modeling at a preliminary stage. As such, 
we begin by generating a design. Even if it's a poor design, we've laid foundations we can rework and iterate upon. There are simply too many unknown vessel considerations to set this facet of the design in stone at this point. Alright, so in summary, to form a transverse bulkhead, select the bulkhead definition window. From the file menu, select define new bulkhead points and then populate the relevant bulkhead location and naming structure in the appropriate input cell. To add additional bulkheads, use the edit add bulkhead command or press Control A. Finally, remember your bulkheads can be updated, added or deleted in real time based on subsequent analysis that you conduct to inform your design. At this point, I would encourage you to start walking through the process of trying to create bulkheads in your own design. Bulkhead placement is an essential early consideration in the stability analysis of your vessel, and further design considerations such as floatable lengths analysis and damage stability hinge on appropriate subdivision of your vessel's internal volume. If you have any questions or feedback, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments or email me directly. Your feedback and input helps make each tutorial better, so if there's something you're not seeing or would like to learn, let me know so that I can develop the content for it. Also, feel free to like or subscribe to the channel. It's the most direct way I know to inform you of new and related content as it's published. Your participation encourages me to keep producing these things, so thanks for watching.